Now, let's hide this motion. Click this. And at any time, if you want to look at the remaining stock, you can select process and right click and select remaining stock. And over here, you can click show to show the remaining stock and you can play with the bit of transparency to look at the remaining stock. Okay, from here you, you can uh, have some rough idea what to do next. And over here you can you can it can allow you to save into a STL file. Okay, a cat file name uh, STL file to import into back into any cat file. Okay, and. How about what happens if you want to see the simulations? Simulations. Okay. To simulate this process, you just select this process and go to select machines, machining simulations. And you have the options. Uh, to check material removable, uh, how the cut tool will cut the material, or to check the part. Okay, you can choose two is okay. This is tolerance of the uh, checking, the tolerance of the checking, and do you want to offset the part? Sometimes uh, uh, for electrodes, you need to offset the spark gap so that you can get a correct uh, checking. So for electron, maybe you here you put in the minus point one something like that. Uh, use machines. This is for machine simulator. So if you have uh, four four axis machines or five axis machine, then most most probably you have these options to use. For now, just ignore for three axis. Of course, you can uh, uh, buy these options for three axis also. But again, it doesn't really need it. And um, the reference UCS, uh, you can I can change to maybe G fifty four. And this this only uh, matters. This only works for machine simulations. Okay, if you don't have machines, so no need to change this. Is okay. And you have two options for this: a turbo mode or double check mode. Okay. Uh, the difference is simple. A, if you want to check it very accurately, then you use a double check. That's all. But it costs you some some times, uh, more time to simulate. So most of the time we use turbo mode, and then just click OK to load the simulator simulator. And this is the Simaton simulators. Okay, how how to rotate the the stuff? The same as Simaton. What I do inside Simaton. And here you have a few tab pages. Uh, some tab pages, tab pages uh, you you might not see by default. If you don't see this, for example, the cutscene. Okay. You can always go to this setting, uh, window, and on this tab pages. Okay. So now I'm going to talk about CutSim. CutSim is the accuracy. It, it control the accuracy, the stock. So if uh, your machine is three axis, make sure the stock is three axis. Uh, don't use five. Of course, you, you can use five if you want, but the simulation will be very slow. So for three axes, I suggest use three, not five, and unless uh, you have some undercut uh, things that you want to simulate. Yeah, and here you have option to check for the fruit during rapid mood if the uh, cutter fruit uh, touch the material during. Uh, 
video drill it will give you some alarm, some message, it will stop and also the upload and the checking of the holder for this so and the accuracy tab in this one allow you to control the accuracy that you want how it create okay before I think it's the medium okay if you change the high the simulation will be slow so in this case I will use medium if your computer is very lousy then change to low so after you change something here you need to restart the stock like that and here here's move list and some other things okay now this is play you can rotate during the two cutting and also you can choose to display or not to display the tool here and you can increase the speed of the simulations or slow down the speed with this one okay and this is the uh, progress bar if you cannot see this you can own it from here the progress bar here this one you can also uh, pause go step by step and of course you can also drag the progress bar to any destinations and it will immediately update the stock to that destinations and again if you want to look at the cutting motions you can display this aligned yeah so you have the option to display uh, the everything or just up to the cutter okay or this one a few options to look at the motions if you need to look at let's cancel this also let's check everything and beside this you have the option to show the points look at this I will show you the points. You see this point? One point, one point. That means from this point to this point is one block, one G code block. Okay? So a lot of options for the simulator that you can play with. And let's go uh, fast forward. Fast forward means that uh, go to the end. Let's off the display of the lines, and this is the final result. The final result. Do you see the the at the edge you have some lines, the black lines. If you don't like this line, you can actually off it. Uh, just go to uh, which one? is here under the analysis tab you just over here this icon to off this edge display and sometimes this one this option will speed up the simulation also okay that's the simulator and let's close this Now let's look at this process again and go to motion parameters. We have touched on the uh, clearance. Now we I'm gonna explain the entry point. 
my setting now is ramping angle I put 90 degree that means I want the 2 to 20 90 degree in case there's a hole by default uh, Simulton will try to plunge outside of the material to start the cutting. Okay, plunge outside of the material to start the cutting, if possible. But sometimes, uh, due to the complexity of the part, in uh, some area you you are unable to plunge outside. You have to plunge inside. For example, a hole. Let's look at the last. For example. At this layer here, you see over here, the tool is plunging 90 degree to cut this hole over here because my uh, the ramping angle that I set uh, just now I'm actually setting a 90 degree. You can see the tool is plunge 90 degree down and go start cutting. So sometimes this is not good for our cutters. So we suggest to change the plunging. Let's change the plunging now. Okay, we suggest uh, don't don't use 90 degree. This is bad for the cutters. Let's say uh, I'll change to 3 degree plunging. And the red, this setting here, ram radius. This is the radius of the helix. If the space is big enough for the helix to form, you create a helix to ram in. Okay. If the space is not big enough, then you follow the cutting profile. I will show you later on. Now let's look again. Maybe get look at the last layer layer you can see now instead of plunging in 90 degree now you have some ramping angle okay ramp motions let's change the block all the block and let's animate is the tool now is ramping down with an uh, angle of 3 degree and because the space is not big enough, you follow the profile shape. The profile shape now is a, a blue color, so the ramping motion also will follow the blue color shape because due to the space is not enough. This is called ramping entry. Now let's look, let's look at this picture. Let's say now uh, we have an emule, and the emule only can have side cut. The bottom totally cannot cut. So what happens if this if this cutter cut a hole? This hole. If the hole diameter is uh, less than two D. Uh, less than in this case 10 is 20. If this whole diameter less than 20, then the flat enemy will start to cut or start to touch the bottom, cutting the bottom, and this will break the cutter. Now let's look at this picture. Uh, for our two bonus cutter diameter uh, 32 R6, okay, this is our tools, and of course the bottom of the tools cannot be cut. Uh, you can assume the DS of 20 mm, this area, the cutter cannot cut. So, if I'm going to use this cutter to cut a hole, and the hole, hole diameter, smaller than uh, 
ds plus uh, 2 diameter divided by 2 plus 2 diameter divided by 2 it will be 20 plus 16 plus 16 so it will be 52 so if I'm going to use this bonus cutter to cut a whole diameter smaller than 52 then uh, this cutter will start to touching the bottom okay the bottom of the cutter will start to touch and as the whole diameter getting smaller uh, the touching point become uh, more more and more towards the center of the cutter and this will uh, cause the cutter to break because uh, at the center there is no insert cannot cut so uh, to avoid uh, the cutter to touch the bottom of the tool when doing rough cut uh, we can control the MB MP distance in Simaton. This is uh, mean plant size. MP stands for mean plant size distance. Now let's look at this two bar again. Let's look at the layer, the last layer. So the cutter is trying to machine a very very small hole and of course uh, if the cutter go down like this it will touch the bottom. Uh, the material will knock the bottom of the cutter and the cutter might break. To avoid this, uh, you can always go to these parameters called mean plant size. Mean, mean plant size. So if you don't understand about mean plant size, you can select this, these parameters and press F1 and over here it have some explanations of how uh, mean plant size works okay so now let's look back at these pictures this is our cutters okay mean plant size and MP distance okay so MP distance what is the good best MP distance uh, that we should put for this so normally MP is equal to 2 DS. DS is the blind area of the tool. This is how you put. So in this case my MP will be 20. 20. And if I put a mean plant size of 20, that means I'm telling Simaton uh, if there's a whole diameter smaller than uh, 52, don't cut it. Skip it. So, I can always key the value 20, or I can do like this, key the formula, TLDI uh, minus 2 times CRRD. So, if I key this formula, uh, if I change my tool to black MU, I still can use this value, no need to change, bonus is still okay also. So it is 20. Then I just let's calculate and see. Okay. Calculation is finished. And let's navigate. Change the layer. Go to the last you can see. There's no more cutting at this uh, small hole here anymore because this is smaller than uh, uh, diameter 52 so for mean plant size we suggest you key the proper value to avoid the tool from uh, touching the bottom and break the tool Now let's look at this this parameter now. Uh, connect passes wire clear for distance bigger than 
this setting. What's the meaning of this? Uh, I'm gonna put it as uh, zero now. Let's execute and I'm gonna show you something. Now let's check navigator. Let's look here. You can see here the cutters is moving from this point to this point and uh, this, this distance this is uh, what is the distance uh, let me check the distance is roughly 22 mm okay so from this point to travel to this point uh, Simatron, if you put in zero, the simatron will jump, jump to clear, and then go to the, the other point. This is the jumping. Right. This is due to this value here, I'm putting zero. Okay. So by default, it is four times PLDI. It means that in this case 128 it means that okay from if the two need to jump from uh, one point to another point if the distance is smaller than 128 it will use uh, G01 a feed motion instead of rapid motion let me calculate and see the result You see the difference after I put in 128 now instead of jump the two jumping to a clear it will connect with a, a feet motions that means less jumping so this parameter is for you to control jumping So if you put in uh, 128, it means that if the uh, distance is less than 128, it will not jump up to clear, it will connect by a uh, feed motions. If the uh, distance is bigger than 128, then the two will jump to the clear and go to the next point. Now let's look at the other parameters. Okay, the entry beyond stock limit that means that you want the cutter to come uh, punch outside of the stock. Uh, the entry mode. Yeah. So most of the time, of course, you use optimize, and sometimes if you don't want the cutter to punch at all, you use no punching. Okay, and sometimes uh, you. You want to drill the uh, stock first before you do roughing, then you can use the drilling options. Okay, so before roughing, you make a hole and then uh, after that, you plunge the tool inside the hole to, to start roughing. Of course, this kind of roughing process is, is uh, we don't see a lot now. Okay, so most of the time it's optimized and no plunging. And boundary, uh, I will skip this because we don't even select any boundary. It means that we cut everything. Uh, but tolerance and surface offset. Uh, tolerance. Okay, so point zero one is, is most of the time for roughing is okay. This tolerance, no need to put uh, too small. Uh, if I put a point one, it means that uh, after I cut a part with surface offset zero, my part, some area on my part, uh, will have plus point one. Some area will have uh, minus point one, plus minus point one. Oh. So after the offset, uh, so I have three group of surface Y. Just 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 now we selected three groups here. Three. The first 
first one is the cavity phase, second is the budding phase, and third one is the flat area. So if you choose three different groups, you can key in three different surface offset for the uh, machining, let's say 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and 0.3. Okay. So there's some relation between the tolerance and, and, and the minimum surface offset. So my suggestion is uh, the surface tolerance, if you want to put it larger, don't put it uh, larger than 50% of the minimum surface offset. Okay, maximum contour gap is uh, 0 0.01. It means that if you have uh, two contour and between this contour you have some gaps. And if the gap is smaller than 0 0.01, simultaneously you will assume this gap to be closed. It is connected. If bigger than 0 0.01, simultaneously assume this two contour is not connected. That, that is the meaning. Electrode machining is for machining electrode for you to pin a 2D orbit gap or and a 3D, 3D orbit gap. So in this case, I will ignore this because we are cutting inserts. Next, the two trajectory. Two trajectory here uh, calculations. This is regarding the stock cal calculations. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, we suggest you to use the optimize. Yeah. In case sometimes you, if you want uh, to have uh, higher accuracy of the stock, uh, maybe you are you are cutting something that is, is small, things like that. You want more high high accuracy, then you choose this one. So of course, high accuracy will uh, takes a uh, longer time to calculate. Faster calculation is for you sometimes you have a very very big part and it takes a long time to calculate then you can use this option to calculate. And of course if you use this option the tolerance of the stock will be larger. And most of the time use the uh, optimize. Climb mode. This is cutting style. You can choose climb or conventional. Most of time, most of the time, of course, climb in milling. And if you choose climb in milling or conventional milling, there will be a lot of jump because this one cannot be avoided. If you don't like jump, you can choose always choose mix. Mix the two will not jump, but it is very bad for the cutter. Of course, you can choose mix and the final plus is climb or conventional. And again, most of the time it's going to be milling. Cutting strategy for the spiral. Okay, I would suggest you use optimize most of the time. So if you want to have more control, go to user define here. You can more control on how you should cut the part. Let's go use optimize. Vertical step. Okay, type. Vertical step control. Uh, this one, uh, most of the time, I would suggest to use a uh, fixed plus horizontal plane. Okay. So if you use fixed only and your part your part have a lot of flat area, then you might find find that uh, some flat area the material remain maybe 0.1, some area maybe. Uh, Material remain is 0.5. Some area maybe the material remain is uh, 1.5. Okay. Due to the constant vertical step, you see this is very thick amount of material here. So if we choose the fixed plus horizontal, what happens after cutting the uh, using a fixed down step and you, Simatron will go and cut the flat plane again, all the flat plane down to the required offset. Okay, so if you choose this option, you have this this one more option to control. Uh, skip plane, close the fixed layer. Okay, this is very good option. If I put 0.45, it means that okay, before Simatron cut a flat plane, you will check the amount of material that is remain on the flat plane. If the Amount of material is more than 0.45, then you will go and cut. 
Less than that, it will skip the flat plane. True spiral. Mm, this I'll show you pictures. This is true spiral. This spiral you can choose which one you want for the cutting. I'll use a true spiral. And next parameter: machining by region or by layer. Region. Region means that if you have two holes, you finish one hole, then go to the other hole. Right? By layer. You will cut the first layer of first hole, then go to the first layer of second hole, then come back again to the second layer, then go to the next hole for second layer. So a lot of jumping if you use layer. But if your part you if your part have a lot of thin wall, you must use these options because if you use by regions, then uh, your cutter will bend the wall. Now there's a true trajectory. Other exact limit. Uh, if you choose no, that means you want to cut everything. Of course, you can also control uh, until where you want to cut. Okay, you can click here and select one point uh, from model and you update the value for you. This is minus 58. That means you are telling Simatron to cut until minus 58. So in this case, I choose no. Uh, high speed machining uh, is good to at least on the basics. I would suggest on the basic to have the uh, corners. Okay, what is this? I will show you. So this is without corner. This is with corners. With corners, then uh, the cutter will be better. The uh, two lines will be longer. And um, clean clean between passes. Uh, uh, we all most of the time we use basic. I will explain this parameter later on. And so stop sharing holder tracking. Most of the time we use complete. Yeah, complete. Of course, you have another advanced for detail control, but uh, again, most of the time complete. That means we uh, the cutter will cut uh, those area that the, uh, the cutter can cut. Okay, if the hole is too deep, then the cutter will ignore it, that area. Minimum stop width, yeah, this is uh, a very good one parameters. Let's say if I put 0.5, means that, okay, I'm asking Smartphone to check. If the amount of material remaining on the part is uh, less than 0.5, don't cut it. If the material remaining more than 0.5, cut it. That is the meaning. Okay, so that will be the motion parameters. Motion machine parameters. Machine parameters is for you to key in the RPM and P weight. Yeah. Uh, feet spin calculators, you can use this one to calculate. If you want, or you can straight away key in the value of the DC, maybe 200, then you'll calculate RPM over here, or just straight away you can key the RPM over here. And the fee rate, let's say my fee rate will be 3000. Okay, entry is an entry fee rate, so 30 means that 30% of this fee rate, and this is a plunge fee. And this one, this one is an adaptive feed control. If you own it, you can cancel it if you want. If you own it, then you have two settings that you set. One is increased to maximum 100%. One is decreased to maximum 100%. So if you, if you own this, it's Simatron, uh, uh, check the two load, the cutter load. And if the cutter load is less, then Simatron will move the Cut the fuel rate faster, okay, up to maximum of 150%. If the two load is, is very high, then it will slow down the fuel rate of the cutters down to a minimum of 30%.
of course these two values here can change up to your own uh, requirement air motion I have touched I have touched this one later uh, just now yeah coolant and coolant off is MO9 and flood is M8 air this is for the air so for roughing it's good to use the air so if the M code is not correct inside the G code you, you can always ask your us request us to change for you yeah that is the machine parameters let's say thank calculate So after the first roughing, uh, let's check the remaining stop. Just right click and use this uh, remaining stop. Show. And you can see, after the first roughing, uh, we still have uh, some uh, uh, small, small area that we need to use a smaller cutter to cut. Okay. So next we're going to do some uh, second second roughing process. So let's say now the second cutter I'm gonna create a second cutters, uh, a new cutters, and this one also is a bonus cutter, but this is an R4 and maybe it's diameter 16. Okay. And Diameter 16, R4, and cut length for the will be 8, the insert size is 8, and then clear uh, 5 times 16 is uh, maybe I put it to 60. Okay, this is clear and up a shank. Uh, I can not the shank. Let's ignore the shank. And maybe I'm gonna create new holders, smaller holders. HP uh, maybe fifty. Fifty. Okay. If you want to specify your spindle head also it's possible. You can do this. And that's it. And okay. This is my second roughing cutters. To do the second roughing process is very easy. Uh, what I need is just uh, Copy this, make a copy of this the first roughing process. So I will rename this uh, first rough. This is the second rough. And then let's edit the second process. And I change cutter to this and click OK. And you might want to do some preview and check some preview. For example, estimate the clear length to check whether is it enough for you. So 58, I put 60, it should be enough. And uh, most of the parameters uh, I will uh, keep the same. The only different one, maybe I will change the 1.2 this is good mm, yeah I use the same settings you can see here uh, just now is 1.8 now it's 1.2 because it, uh, it calculate from the uh, variable so after I key variables I don't need to change it change the parameter anymore so I use these settings it's good enough of course uh, one thing that you have to change it may be the um, machining parameters the RPM, right? Maybe 200 again. Yeah, 
uh, maybe I'm going to choose 2006 RPM and maybe this one is 3000 yeah because different cutter will have different uh, RPM period the rest I, I'll keep it the same and then just calculate and this is the result To simulate, of course, if you want, if you want to simulate uh, everything, including the first working process, you can choose this first uh, the whole folder and go choose machine simulations, or you can also use control key to select two of the process. Okay, or you can straight away jump to the second process. Just select the second process and go to machine simulations, and click OK to look at that simulation of the second process only and you can see that simulator will automatically recognize uh, where the stock remain okay and the minimum, minimum stock width that I have put is 0.5 this means that uh, smart home will cut only those area with material more than more than 0.5. Of course, uh, there will be a lot of jumping. This cannot be avoided. Now let's check the remaining stock again. Again after the second wrapping tool still we have uh, quite a lot of area to, to machine. Okay so we need to change to a smaller cutter. So I've decided to go for bonus A. So let's create a new cutters. Graph bonus 8mm, a ball tool, and diameter is 8, and 5 times diameter it will be around 40. Uh, cut length maybe uh, 20 and the holder okay so I'm going to create a holder maybe I'll use the baby holder mm, how about uh, 16 16 okay baby holder like this uh, with uh, maybe 50 and then add another one the second holder maybe will be 50 and 50 something like this ok so I'm going to copy this process again paste and change this to third graphing and then I'll edit the process select bonus 8 and OK and then uh, I might need to check again ok let me check estimate the clear length 
that uh, we require 56 okay the estimate, estimated minimum clear length is 56 and now my cutter is bono diameter 8 of course I cannot plan 56 uh, plan 5D that will be uh, 40 only so this means that this cutter will not cut everything but I'm going to use it to cut it uh, up to the maximum that it can go then I will choose OK uh, let's check in go to procedure I will change again the steps 1.2 uh, too big I think this is too big uh, maybe I'll I'll change the point five for this point five. Okay. So I said uh, everything other parameter I'll keep it the same. And let's calculate to calc to, to calculate the wrapping process. Here we are, the third routing process. Uh, let's go simulate again. So, of course, the, after roughing the uh, area like this, because this area is too deep, uh, the cutter cannot cut. Uh, so, Simaton will skip this uh, deep zone over here. So, the program will be very safe uh, because Simaton only can cut. Simaton will cut uh, those area that this this cutter able to cut with the holder and things uh, things like that. Yeah. Let's check remaining stock. As you can see, after the last roughing to the third roughing, okay, you look at those vertical wall, and the surface offset is uh, almost constant almost constant almost constant in this case this object that I set is 1 mm almost constant but uh, at those uh, horizontal area around the 0 to maybe 40 degree area like this area here and also this area okay we still have a lot of uh, steps remain big step remains of course, uh, before finishing, we need to do some summing finishing to cut this kind of, uh, remove all of these uh, steps on the horizontal area before the finishing. So next, I'm going to uh, cut those horizontal area, do a summing finishing, only the horizontal area from 0 to 40 degree region. How to do that? 
So I will use the last graphing tool, make a copy of this, and I put the semi, semi horizontal uh, zero to maybe forty degree. So I will change this, edit this process, and now I'm not going to use the volume milling anymore. I will choose the surface milling option and in this here I will choose the finished mill by limit angle I want to control my uh, cutting by limit angle and uh, our other parameters it, it will be almost the same and then uh, Uh, most of the parameters is almost the same. Yeah, no need to change. I will keep the offset the same also. The difference is in the two trajectory. Here's the difference. Okay. Uh, in this option, we have two area. You can choose horizontal area you want to cut or not, or vertical area you want to cut. In this case, I will off the vertical area. Because I don't want to cut the vertical area because the vertical area is is good enough for finishing. Right. Then I just want to cut the horizontal area. And for the horizontal area, you have the options here. Uh you can cut by spiral cut or parallel cut or 3D step. The 3D step that means you have a constant 3D pitching. And again, uh, the area that we need to cut is only from 0 to 40. In that case, if I choose a spiral and a 3D step, not much will be, not much difference, okay? But 3D step, of course, will give you longer calculations. So I'll choose a spiral. And again, use a climb cut and uh, cut things outside in or inside out, okay? So if I choose outside in, if I choose outside in, they will have a chance for the tool to cut, uh, to plunge into the part near the wall. Because outside in always cut uh, from the outside to inside. So for example, the horizontal area over here, the tool might plunge into this position near the wall. This is the one that we don't want. So it's good to, for Sermi to set inside out so that the two always plunge into the center of the regions in that case it will not plunge uh, in near the wall at all uh, this is a uh, pitching the steps mm, maybe uh, maybe uh, for this I'll put uh, how about the point I'll put 0.5, okay. Side step 0.5 of 1 mm is okay. I'll put 1 mm. And if possible, use a true spiral motions. And this is the angle that we put. We use control. If I say I put 40 degree, that means Simat Hong will go and search. All the horizontal area from 0 to 40. It will cut until 0 to 40. Uh, 40 to 90, it will skip. And prefer corner radius. Yeah, this one here. You can only use OK. That's it. Next. What I need to do just to calculate. And you can see the two only cut the horizontal area from 0 to 40 degrees. The vertical area, all it will skip.
Okay, now I, I'm going to show you how to avoid cutting the, those areas that is flat because this flat area we want to use a flat area to make sure this portion. Uh, okay, I'm going to edit this process. What I do is uh, the flat surface. This one I will reset all. Unset and select this three flat surface and then I'm going to use this check surface to select the flat surface and set flat face select all the flat face as a check surface and then after that uh, of course the check surface also you have some tolerance uh, this is uh, by default Okay, the, you have some offset, yeah, the default offset is um, this value. So it is good to put some offset, maybe I'll put a check surface of one, maybe one mm. Okay, uh, to avoid the cutter to touch the flat surface. And then just calculate. Yes. And now, as you can see, the green surface, the flat surface, is now uh, avoid. There are no machining at the green face.